All right, hello everyone. My name is Corey Dowds, Vedic Astrologer. Today is Friday, Venus Day. I figured I would talk about Venus and talk about Venus conjunct the lunar nodes, Rahu and Ketu. And uh, because yeah, I taught this uh, little free course on the Avashtas of Venus. And then I never ended up really including the lunar nodes. So I feel like this is gonna kind of complete that course in a sense, but it's also just a nice standalone video as well. So the Avashta is like, are the conditions, the habits, the planets, you know, the habits we have with our planets. And those are the, the those are very, very important. Then there's like the lunar nodes though, and those show even more of like this higher ceiling this karmic ceiling the lunar nodes are always like the <clears throat> which are the rahu k2 or what we call the what they call the north node and the south node in the european traditions these are like the highest <clears throat> karmic ceiling if you ask me and uh the most profound thing that you can get out of all of astrology is really out of ha hiring a, a skilled reader to help you understand your lunar nodes because all the other things, like these Lajitati Avashtas, are things that if I explain to you, like you would get it, or you could almost kind of figure it out in time on your own. But the Rahu and Ketu things are where we're really hung up, where we're really confused and distorted. And they also show the strangest karmas that we have, the most perplexing and mysterious karmas. Um, and people who have prominent Rahu and Ketu, it's a well-known thing in Vedic astrology, I'm sure most of you already know that, but people who have really prominent Rahu or Ketus tend to be more, have lived lives that are just more bizarre, more faded, more strange, you know, more like their, their karma is more pronounced than the average person. So these are, of course, very, very important to learn about. And what I'm going to say here is definitely not saying that this it, this applies to you and your Rahu Venus or your K2 Venus if you're watching this and you have those but these are just general ways if you actually got a reading from me or someone we might interpret it totally differently and you'll see there's a wide array of people who who or if you research this you'll find that there is a wide array of people with this but let's just start with it okay so Venus with K2 as you know, K2 is your past life indicator showing where you've been very strong at. And also, I just have to step in because I had a student who was talking with me and he was in the impression that evolutionary astrology was the first branch of astrology to make this point about Rahu and K2 and your <clears throat> past lives and, and future lives. And that's not true at all. I mean, Indian astrology is, is the tradition that has carried the lunar nodes or has it the longest and it goes back the furthest. Um, the lunar nodes even rule nakshatras and things, and nakshatras are ancient. So I think that the lunar nodes and this idea of karmic development, where you're going and where you've been, is, is actually, if it's from any one culture, it would have to be from India, since India is also the only, like, the main culture emphasizing karma and reincarnation, right? Although the Greeks and other, pretty much all ancient cultures actually did believe in reincarnation, believe it or not, even in the Bible reincarnations referred to neither here nor there though okay <clears throat> venus k2 <clears throat> venus k2 means you've done venus a lot in past lives and you're going to have to complete some karma with venus in this life and k2 represents like completing and making peace with things and the in a nutshell the venus rahu is kind of going to mean the opposite it means you're going to be learning more venus things in this life it means that venus is still kind of under construction for you in this incarnation because whatever is with rahu is really kind of under construction or being developed in this life there's if it was a building you would have the scaffolding still on it and things like that <clears throat> So, um, what does it mean to need to develop Venus? So if you have Venus with, uh, sorry, go back, start with K2. If you need to develop Venus, or sorry, if you have Venus with K2, it means you've already developed Venus. So you're already someone who's diplomatic, who uh, is maybe graceful, who is uh, able to make people like them, you know? 
Um, the, that's one of the main things you'll notice about people with Venus K2 conjunct. Early on in life, they get a lot of things handed to them. They get a lot of free rides. They get a lot of things given to them. They're very likable. They kind of just have this preternatural gift of diplomacy or of tact. Tactfulness is like a key word for Venus, um, and especially with Libra. <clears throat> So they'll behave in ways that make them really likable because in past lives they already f developed and flexed that Venus muscle. So they know how to, you know, Venus is just how you get along in the world. You know, how we're all supposed to be, uh, do unto others, you know, treat each other right, a good heart-centered lifestyle and attitude. So that's all great. Um, and they, they kind of innately know how to make things work socially and are very composed. The only problem is that oftentimes, like later on in life, because their self worth is so tightly uh, intertwined with their social life, that if they just slightly fall out of social graces with the world or with the community, that really messes them up. Um, <clears throat> so these people are like only really secure through Venus, you see, because K2 is like your security paradigm. It's really what you want. What you needed to make happen in past lives is your K2. And it, in past lives, you're like, as long as I can have this, I'll be okay. That's where K2 is at in your chart. Um, <clears throat> so, and remember, K2 is a flag. It's a Sanskrit word, which means a flag, your conquered territory. Um, a flag is where you conquer. It also symbolizes like forts and castles. And um, K2 is also the word for a comet, just for fun, because a comet is a flying, beaming thing with a flag of dust and light stuff coming off of it. So in ancient times, like Varaha Mahira, in this book, Brihat Samhita, he explains how even reading the interpretations of different colored comets, red colored, trail of a comet, yellow color, these and these mean different things, and these are all actually K2s, just so you know, because the word for comet is also K2. Okay, it also means like a chief or a general. Um, so, <coughs> so that's their fort. Your Venus is like your castle of insecurities, your paradigm that you have to have work out. I have K2 in a Venus sign, so I know what this is like, and in some ways, not exactly like this Venus K2 thing, but we just, uh, these types of people, it's like, yeah, you, you lived in Athens and Paris. You were, you were a person who, you know, knew that it was really important to keep social s structures going and everything. And so as a result, what's unfortunate is you probably got too attached to that. And so you had to take an incarnation where you're not going to be able, where you're going to slowly, your own higher self is going to teach you that you're too attached to social outcomes, to social graces, to social validation, to getting um, getting your self-worth recognized socially is really crucial for a Venus K2 person. And if they get that, they think life's perfect, uh, at least for a little while. Um, and if they don't get that, they don't feel secure. And that's, uh, if you don't feel secure, then you're not able to function freely. So then, uh, you know, some sort of dis, dis ease will set in eventually. So you can go to an astrologer and they can help you understand all these things, but um, but this is the, you know at least enough info that some of you guys can work off of if you aren't able to do that. So the paradigm is built around like like gaining those social graces, that support, you know, and <clears throat> eventually that will frustrate them so much that they'll be forced to go to Rahu and do whatever Rahu's saying, which is going to be different for each person. Um, but one good thing is that these people do have good social skills, like they don't want to gossip as much or belittle other people, um, and they have good social graces, and they're an easily likable person, uh, which is also true whenever there's a benefit with K2, it means you have that energy from past lives. Um, but relationships can really disappoint them over time. Um, and, or they can feel like, you know, like because of some stupid social stuff that they're not valuable enough, um, or they can fall out of like, uh, 
you can fall out of grace with their community or with their, <clears throat> you know, with their social world, you know, or something can happen. Some something will make them kind of <clears throat> fall out of favor. Um, and that's more so in the Indian cultures, I noticed, or in more Asian cultures, because um, in America, it's a little bit more like an independent sort of tone overall, um, if you look at it in a more bigger macro standpoint. So yeah, they can have a tough time feeling value in relationships, and um, in Western cultures, it may not be so much the social graces, but they just feel really frustrated in their relationships and unloved by their partners and stuff like that, you know? Um, and then in like a, like in a, from a health standpoint, they could have some weird bacteria issues with the gut and with digestion and really could be good to, to eat good probiotics and, <clears throat> I don't know, just kind of being more mindful of that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. An example of someone with Venus K2 is K and Rao, um, and he, or, or, I think, actually, I can't remember. I think he does have that. Let me think of another person who I know. Um, oh, Alistair Crowley. He was someone who has a Venus conjunct K2, and I think it's ashamed. And he's someone who sort of, like, got, made his way into a lot of high places socially, you know, so he probably did have really good social graces. Um, but was also very controversial socially you know what I mean um, uh, <clears throat> Britney Spears has this so Britney Spears is someone who's super Venus early on and it's gotten really you know it's not good for her it's really unfortunate the way that she's had a really rough go of things I mean she had a breakdown like 15 years ago and she's still practically like a slave to her father and um, you know is it's a whole thing you can you can look into that if you want. But, uh, you know, that's an example of, like, Venus not working out well, you know, and needing to lean to whatever. I don't know her chart, whatever the Rahu thing is. I don't know. But that's one example. Uh, Paris Hilton also. Um, <clears throat> Christian Dior, the fashion designer guy. Uh, um, Bill Murray. Bill Murray is extremely likable, you know what I mean? And for no, without trying, really. You see what I'm saying? So he's, like, kind of a good example of that Venus K2 energy. Um, Robin Williams was also like that. Um, so there's a lot of people. Oh, Joseph Campbell is a really good example of that the master of mythology who I've talked about before. He's one of the wisest people I've ever met because he has his Venus in Pisces exalted with K2. Um, another really brilliant person who has Venus with K2 is, yeah, I should probably write this down too, um, is uh, Nassim Taleb. He's a really, really genius financial like uh, risk management guy, and he has Venus exalted with K2 in Pisces. Um, <clears throat> and I came across him when I was studying a lot of really deep mental finance, wealth, brainy, financial astrology stuff. And um, okay, so that's enough on Venus K2. You have to work on wherever Rahu's at to, to make to get the most out of your relationships and Venus and to know what that really is and eh, you got to probably get a reading um, unless you are a reader yourself um, or have already been told what that is Venus conjunct Rahu <clears throat> this K2 is someone who when you walk in the, when they walk in the room they're you're gonna they're gonna mm, you're gonna like them you know they're gonna be socially graceful this person not so tactful um, and, and just ooh, like it's just gonna be different you know what I mean something about it's gonna be kind of wonky um, these people cannot really have a full grasp of relationships. Like, it's like the other person has almost the K two Venus person has too much expectation and is too narrowly into relationships and um, needs to detach. These people, they can be like that in just like a loose superficial way, but they don't really dig into it enough usually. So they'll want their partner to be everything and not like not have a a healthy realism about it um, you know not recognize that relationships are just one part of life Venus is just one f of the five elements it's not every element you know it's not everything you're supposed to have in life so they have to develop healthy relationship skills they have to like go out of their way to learn these things to take courses pretty much everyone who has these issues I'll send them this free relationship course um, that I've seen clients with this have really great miraculous turnarounds 
Um, and that, that, you know, as they learn to work better with people, they're going to get better responses and reactions and trades and their relationships will improve and then their self-worth will improve. But they'll not want to like try to, they'll not want to figure out that, um, just like we all are with our Rahu thing. Um, like my teacher says, you know, there's one of these placements where you'll be like, your boss will tell you work really hard and we'll give you all the money in the safe once you get this job done and then you get it done and then the safe's full of monopoly money or something it's like not or good it was a cheat you know they feel cheated they feel screwed over um and they get they just feel cheated in life by people um and in trades and in venus the venus realm can also be a little prone to fantasy <clears throat> but they have to realize that love won't fulfill everything get rid of these fantasy storybook romance novel things but then also learn what love really is and learn how relationships really work in 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 conscious ways like rahu is unconsciousness it's also unconscious desires venus is your conscious desire so you put these together it's freaking confusing so these people are, they have to find out what they want. They have to, they don't know exactly what they really love or want or want to do at first. And they have to go through this. This is also why, why Venus Rahu or Rahu Venus dashes are very tough dashes. Same principle. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, and it can be like with the partner. You got to give your partner time to rejuvenate. You got to like recognize the realism in the relationships. Um, and like I said, it's just one part of life. Uh, otherwise, you'll drain your partner. This can also be a placement for like drug addictions, alcoholism, vices, because you're, it's like you can't blame the person because everything they're doing, they're not getting, they're getting the short of the stick back. So it makes one want to turn to having a drink at the end of the day because it's just so damn stressful to deal with all these people and, and keep getting screwed, you know? Um, so these people are the opposite like the other person gets a lot of free rides early in life um, the Venus Rahu person does not get a lot of free rides early in life and Venus is literally vehicle so it's like they don't they may not even get a good vehicle you know what I mean they may be struggling to get from point A to point B in a comfortable way which is Venus um, and these people will just feel like saying to hell with the world because of that and you know that's part of their process you got to honor and respect that if that's what they're going through and you're a reader and they're coming to you and this is what they have you have to really like <clears throat> trust that that's part of their process that they got to go through <clears throat> they'll just be like yeah they'll just be like screw it with the world you know um and they need to eat, like, in terms of diet, they really need a lot of probiotics to get their digestion revved up and to, to, to like, balance out that, you know, Venus is digestion, your ability to absorb. So it means that you might, might not have the greatest digestive strength with Venus Rahu together. And so you want to eat a lot of probiotics and other things that are just easy to digest, good to digest stuff, um, so that you can get that viria like tap into that venus that viria the water rejuvenating element rejuvenate yourself um and just pay more attention to whether a deal is really a good deal or not um and you know then you maybe won't get feel screwed so much um edgar casey had this actually um wait no he didn't Did he? I have it in my notes. Maybe he did. Maybe for some reason, I think he didn't. But uh, so I'll let that one. I'll leave that one alone. Maybe for some reason, I'm doubting that he had that. Um, Tiger Woods. That's an example. He was like. Uh, I always heard that he was like really had a rough father who was like really harsh on him and made him become really good at golf as a kid. So he didn't probably get to have an easy childhood. You know, like no free rides in life. He was probably like forced. And then, you know, all those scandals with like women or whatever. And I don't really, 
I don't know, whatever. Um, I, I don't, I didn't follow that, but that would make sense with Venus Rahu, because like I said, it can be a vice placement, like turning to alcohol, prostitutes, liquor, uh, drugs of all kinds, you know. Um, and I know, and or it can also even get you. I know another client who has this who sell who who works for a wine shop who sells wine. Um, I know another client who has this who's now in jail because they basically lied to everyone in my hometown, Charleston, and, you know, they basically cheated everyone over and over and um, made too many enemies, and now they're in jail, as I'm looking at some of the people in my database that have this. Um, Jane Fonda, Cher. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, Larry David. Wow, that's a good example. Larry David, his whole theme of, you know, playing George Costanza in Seinfeld, or basically that's based on his life, or uh, where everything's going wrong constantly, you know, and and uh, always feeling cheated, you know, and, and then Curb Your Enthusiasm. The whole thing is about him just complaining about how life's not being Venus enough for him, right? There's no harmony, and yeah, that's Venus Rahu. That's a great one. I'll end it on that. <laughs> Larry David. All right, hope that helps you guys. And uh, oh, also, if you are curious about learning Jyotish, uh, I'm doing a study group now. I've already taught my first one, and then I'll set up another one soon. And then I'm also still doing the financial astrology. I've done five classes on that, uh, produced about 10 hours of material, a lot of fun predictions, a lot of things that come accurate. Um, not just because I'm not sharing them here. Um, you got to go and watch those. All right, thanks, y'all. Like, subscribe, whatever, whatever you feel is necessary. How are you?